Hi, my name is Leah Ritt and I'm the director of the Oceanside High School Choir. Please rise for the singing of the national anthem. On behalf of the Oceanside High School Choir, the student officers of the OHS Vocal Music Association wish to share our congratulations to the award recipients from this year's Veteran and Military Service Member Awards. Congratulations! congratulations. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for serving us, veterans. Thank you for your service. We begin with a short introduction to the host of our ceremony today, Assembly Member Tasha Berner Horvath. Elected in 2018 and re-elected again this year, Assemblywoman Tasha Berner Horvath represents California's 76th Assembly District, which encompasses Camp Pendleton, Oceanside, Vista, Carlsbad, and Encinitas. She is part of a leadership team in the Assembly, serving as Assistant Majority Whip and as a member of the Committee on Veterans Affairs, Aging and Long-Term Care, Local Government, and Communications and Conveyance. She also serves on the Joint Legislative Audit Committee, helping ensure responsible and responsive governance throughout the California. Prior to being elected to the State Assembly, Tasha served as a local city council member, city planning commissioner, and is a businesswoman and former PTA leader, and herself a third generation North County resident. Distinguished honorees and members of the public, please welcome our host, the assembly member of California's 76th Assembly District, Tasha Berner Horvath. Thank you, Janet, and thank you. Good morning, everybody. Thank you and welcome to the 76th Assembly District's 2020 Veterans and Service Member Awards. This award ceremony is very special. It's the one and only held this year in the entire state assembly, and I'm so proud to be the assembly member to hold it in my district. What makes this award unique is that the individuals that are nominated from across the district for an open call for nomination. So this means this is award truly is a community effort and you'll see that when you meet our honorees. Thank you all for joining us this morning. With a district that includes Camp Pendleton, the largest military installation on the West Coast, we are a rich district with an incredible military friendly community and neighbors hoods unmatched in the state of California. I couldn't be more proud of this district filled with the resilient and proud military families. And here in the 76th Assembly District, we are humbled by so many supporters and volunteers who take time to support that same military community each and every day. So I'd like to begin my remarks this morning with a big thank you for everyone joining today, for all that you do for all of our communities. I think of my own personal love for our military veterans, about the military service members in my own family, and how as Americans, we are judged in character on how we treat our veterans. And I'm so proud of all of you who have served in uniform and are currently serving or who have supported those family members who have served. Thank you. So to pay tribute in honor of those in our audience who have worn the uniform, please 
please use the chat box to type in um, the branch of service of you or your family members have served in or are currently serving in, whether it be Army, Marines, Navy, Air Force, Coast Guard. We'd love to know. And thank you for your service. So I'd also like to um, thank a few elected officials who have been joining us today as well. We have Carlsbad Council Member Corey Schumacher. Thank you, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule today uh, to join us. If I missed any elected officials, please let my staff know via the chat box. You have Janet Chen, you have staff 8076, and you have Glenn uh, McDonald. Um, so please let them know to make sure we acknowledge you. Um, and I want to thank you for making time. You know, I think the dedication of somebody who making sure that they come uh, and join a virtual celebration really means a lot to all of us. Um, and so um, when I first got elected, one of my first jobs was to make sure that my constituents' voices were heard in the community and also in Sacramento. And so I brought together community leaders who represented different issues um, on the legislation I took to Sacramento or I voted on in Sacramento. So I organized network of respected individuals into 10 district advisory councils. So that's roughly 150 community leaders. Uh, I mean, I'm sure my staff thanks me every day for that. Um, but to assist and discuss us, it matters to my assembly district. Um, so how do this, these bills affect us? What is it that we need? Um, and it tends today, we do have a few members of my uh, Veterans Affairs Advisory Council, and I want to recognize them for joining us today um, before we begin the official ceremony. So we have Elon uh, Enriquez from Blue Star Families. Elon, thank you for joining us today. We have Joe Molina from our National Veterans Chamber of Commerce. Thank you so much. Uh, Joe's also been kind enough. I'll get back to him at the end for providing certificates. Um, for all of our awardees today. It's very kind, Joe. Thank you. And we have Sin Akuk from CSU San Marcos. Um, you know, the, all of your input and all the input of, on my district advisory councils is uh, so much welcomed. And we also have Matt Schillingberg uh, from our, um, from our, uh, from here in Encinitas. So thank you so so much. I'm very grateful for my advisory council members who not only are subject matter experts in their own right, but also individuals who are centers of influence in the district. So thank you for all the advisory councils. And if I missed anybody, again, let my staff know. Um, we're trying to make sure we get everybody virtually. But thank you for everybody who takes the time to join us today and join us three times a year to make sure that I'm doing the best job I can to represent you in Sacramento. So let's move on now to giving out some awards. Um, and that's a great way to start a Tuesday morning, I think. So I will turn it back over to our MC, my district director, Janet Chin. Thank you, Assemblywoman. So our first organizational recognition goes to Vance, Veterans Association of North County. The Veterans Association of North County Resource Center is the inspiration of fellow veteran Chuck Atkinson, whose dream began simply to locate a place where his American Legion post could meet on a regular basis. Seeing a lack of cohesive hub for important services to his fellow veterans, he began a, coll a collaborative of, with other veteran associations and the city of Oceanside. His efforts resulted in the signing of a lease between the city of Oceanside and the Veterans Association of North County for its current location in Oceanside, a 13,500 square foot structure that previously housed the Oceanside Police Department. The transformation since 2013 of this facility to address the specific needs of veterans, retirees, active duty personnel, and their families has been outstanding. Assembly member? Yes. Um, make sure I'm uh, off mute. Um, my staff and I have been uh, volunteering at Vance's month monthly food distributions. And like many of you, I've personally enjoyed volunteering at the food distribution site. And I feel so welcome in this special community um, and volunteering side by side with our special volunteers like Matt Schillingberg, who was my veteran of the year last year from American Legion Post 416 um, last year and a, a, Eli, um, Eileen Jeffries, a volunteer at Vance who couldn't, we could not do what we do with Vance without Eileen. And, and the incredible and tireless efforts of their executive director, Lori Broody. Uh, booty, which makes me feel the camaraderie of this special community. Just last Friday here, uh, I'm told that Vance just this month distributed, distributed food to 673 families. That's 2,418 people. An overwhelming majority of them are active duty members. 
So I believe here in North County, we're very lucky to have an amazing organization that supports our military community like VAMPS. So please join me in presenting the first veteran service, <laughs> military service awards to uh, the Veterans Association of North County. Our executive director, Lori Rudy, was not able to be here today due to her son getting married in Ohio. So accepting this recognition on her behalf is Vance board member and treasurer, Brenda Omar. Brenda, over to you. I'm the treasurer of the Veterans Association of Veteran, uh, Vance, and I have been for over eight years, um, privileged to be a part of this organization. We're an umbrella organization for many other veterans organizations um, in North County. We're located in Oceanside, as you all know, um, which is very close to Camp Pendleton. We're a resource center and a training center for active duty and military veterans and their families. All this training is provided for free. We have funded these programs through our space rentals, which have been closed since March 16th due to COVID. By God's grace, Vance decided to start a Veterans Emergency Financial Aid Fund to offer active duty and military veterans a one-time hand up. Since April, we have paid thousands of dollars towards cell phone bills, utilities, car payments, car insurance, and repairs and rent assistance. Vance also started decided to start a monthly food and diaper assistance on the second Friday of each month since the pandemic hit. From April to October, we have provided close to 14,400 meals to active duty and military veterans. 85.5% of these have been active duty. We've recorded over 2,600 volunteer hours and deliver each month six housebound veterans uh, meals. Our favorite stat is that we have given away over 164,000 diapers. This month, with the help of the community and the donors, we have delivered turkeys and meals to over 670 families. 91% were active duty. For over 10 years, Vance has been committed to serving active duty and military veterans, and we will continue to advance our humanitarian work for our past and present military heroes. On behalf of the Vance Board and our wonderful Executive Director, Lori Bogey, thank you. Thank you, Brenda. Our next award is the category of advocacy. This award is presented to an individual who has shown excellence in advocacy for the most vulnerable people in our population. Assemblywoman. The Excellence in Advocacy Award goes to the Honorable Donald F. Armento. Don Armento retired in the rank of Colonel from the United States Marine Corps Reserve after serving from 1982 to 2009. During his service, he was mobilized to active duty three times and deployed to Kuwait, Iraq, and Korea as a judge advocate and liaison officer for numerous Marine units. After retiring from the Marine Corps, Don was selected to serve as a commissioner for the San Diego Superior Court, dispensing justice in the North County branch in Vista. He was later appointed as the administrative law judge for the California Department on Social Services, where he heard Medi-Cal in-home supportive services and covered California appeals. As part of the comprehensive wildfire response in our state, he served as a shelter manager and resource specialist for the fire evacuees and families in Monterey, Santa Cruz, and surrounding counties. He has worked with several agencies to provide shelter, meals, and medical care for evacuees and their families displaced by wildfires. Don's advocacy is evident in his efforts to provide hope for families affected by justice issues or natural disasters in our state. It is my pleasure to honor Honorable Donor Donald F. Armento with this year's Excellence in Advocacy Award. Donald? Thank you, Tasha. Thank you, Janet, and your staff. I'm humbled and honored to be selected as uh, uh, Veteran of the Year for Advocacy, and I'm not sure I deserve it. But having said that, uh, it's been my privilege to serve for 28 years uh, as a Marine, and for longer than that in our community. I've had the privilege to serve as, a, as an attorney in civil litigation, uh, as a commissioner for Superior Court, and now as an administrative law judge for the state of California. You know, this has uh, been a year of 
we're, we're all called to be resilient. It's been a challenging, tough, uh, multifaceted year. And uh, anyone who thinks otherwise just hasn't been paying attention to what's going on in the news and in politics. Uh, I came across a poem uh, which is meaningful to me. I'll, with your indulgence, I'll share it with you. It's called Invictus. It was written in 1875 by the English poet William Henley. You may have heard it. Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade, and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. The poem evokes the need for us to be resilient in this challenging year. I hope and pray that all of us can continue to be resilient throughout the rest of 2020 and into 2021. I think we're gonna need it with all this going on. Assembly Member Horvath, I thank you for your leadership uh, in recognizing our veterans and veteran organizations. It's tremendously meaningful to me. It deeply is moving to me and I know to others. I greatly appreciate it. And again, I'm humbled and honored. Thank you. Thank you, Joanna. Our next award is the category of entrepreneurship. This award is presented to an individual who has shown excellence in entrepreneurship and who is a business owner who continues to give back to positively improve the quality of life in their community. The Excellence in Entrepreneurship Award this year goes to Richard Dency. Richard Dency is a Vietnam veteran who served as a helicopter door gunner from May 1968 to July 1969. Following his Vietnam service, he served as a Marine security guard for American embassies in Iceland and Portugal, and later served for two years as a drill instructor. Seeking every opportunity to improve the lives of others while serving in the Marine Corps, he wrote and directed a safety seatbelt video for the base safety program called Seconds for a Chance for Life. The video was narrated by actor Jack Klugman, and included a reenactment of a fatal head-on collision that killed a young Marine Lance Corporal who was driving under the influence and was not wearing his seatbelt. Richard retired from the Marine Corps after 20 years of service and was appointed from the Ohio Attorney General as the Assistant Director for the Ohio Peace Officer Training Council. For five decades working in both public and private sectors, Richard authored several law enforcement articles, co-authored a chapter in a college level police personnel tax and established an annual law enforcement awards program for Ohio law enforcement statewide. He later started his own company's Flag Keepers LLC, a service company offering the rental of custom design flag displays. He has supported several North County events that honor our veterans through his business by providing customized flag displays. It's an honor to present Richard Dency with this year's Excellence and Entrepreneurship Award. Richard? Good morning, everyone. Uh, first and foremost, I would um, like to extend my thanks and gratitude to Assemblymember Berner Horvath for her work and vision uh, in establishing the annual uh, Veterans Award Program for the 76th District Assembly. I can say without reservation that her support of veterans within the district is deeply appreciated. You know, I believe that veterans openly share their values of loyalty, honesty, dependability, and integrity within the community where they choose to live. We want to be involved, we want to be active, and we want to provide whatever support or service would be helpful. You know, it, it keeps us connected, we have the opportunity to uh, work with some amazing people. And most importantly, it allows us to have a voice in building a stronger and a safer community. You know, personally, I've been act active with events hosted by the Oceanside Chamber 
of Commerce. I've been active in my church in Vista Faith Lutheran and also the Armed Forces uh, USM YMCA at Marine Corps Base Camp Pendleton. My service and assistance at events within the city of uh, Oceanside and also Camp Pendleton has been personally very rewarding. You know, the San Diego community is rich with a veteran population eager to lend a helping hand when and where the opportunity arises, not for any personal gain or personal recognition, but rather for the satisfaction of knowing that our service in some small way resulted in a positive impact and made a difference. I'm humbled to be a recipient of this year's Veterans Awards program, and I would like to extend my thanks to everyone involved in hosting today's event, and I look forward to being of further service in the future. You know, everyone's voice and talent is important and should be respected and shared. And I'm confident that by working together in whatever capacity we can, our community will continue to grow and prosper simply because we chose to make the situation better. Thank you so much. Thank you, Richard. Our next award is in the category of mentorship. This award is presented to an individual who has shown excellence in mentorship and an award that represents going above and beyond and providing time, resources, and effort to assist others. Thank you, Janet. The Excellence in Mentorship Award goes to Erica Paez. Erica Paez has been a North County resident for over 13 years after serving in the Army in 2007. She's an independent consultant with Airborne International and clinician with the First Alarm Wellness, which provides mental wellness services to our first responders. Thank you, Erica. At work, she weaves her training as a, cert a certified brain health coach and teaches clients how to live a brain healthy life. Her husband, Rich, is a 13 year Marine Corps veteran and together they have three children, Gabe, age 18, Elijah, age four, and Calliope, um, age two. Uh, God bless you for having three kids. I stopped it too. Erica has her master's in social work and is com uh, completing her doctorate in education. She works at the Department of Veteran Affairs at Veteran Service Representative, where she gained the knowledge that she still uses today to help veterans understand their rating decision letters, how to maximize er their education benefit, and navigate their healthcare system. Her passion is to educate her community on living a full and healthy lifestyle and follow veterans on the benefits they have earned with their service. You can find her and her family at the beach, reading books, or having a massive trampoline jumping party in their backyard. So I wanna, it's my pleasure to present the Excellence and Mentorship Award to Erica Paez. Erica? Thank you so, so much, uh, Assembly Member Tasha. It means so much to me to be here today. And as Honorable Armento said that, you know, there are tons of mentors in the veteran community and I'm just one example of that. And by no means am I the only one or, or the, the only one who could be standing here today. I just happened to have someone, you know, submit that for me. And it means a lot to me that that happened. So thank you so much for the time today. And I just have a few words, you know, a life of service can be built into you at any time in your life. One of the things I'm most proud of is that, and fortunate to know, is that I had parents who instilled in me that idea that we, as a community, are better not when we think exactly the same, but rather when we tangibly support our neighbors. So I was, from a young age, understood that I was blessed and born into a family with resources, but somewhere along the line, someone instilled in me that I could be a library to house information and resources for others who may have not had the same kind of family circumstances. So I saw myself as this library from a young girl. And I remember thinking, oh, this person is checking out this information that I acquired. That's so awesome. Then after leaving the army, I saw the VA as a process that in place I could gather info from, digest it with my background and help my brothers and sisters in the most tangible way, which is by understanding the benefits that they earned. And so often I hear folks saying, someone else is either worse off than me or I don't deserve basically the benefits I got. And my pleasure is walking them back through that about the service that they have done and they have earned these benefits. Um, this information 
is so important in the mental wellness world. And I call it mental wellness intentionally because I like the strengths-based view of that rather than mental illness. We can all be well, right? So information, even when you're suffering or struggling or dealing with a scenario or a pandemic or a school shutting down, information, even when it's not exactly what you want to hear, can help ground you. So I saw this and grounded another individual. I saw this as an opportunity when I saw frustrated veterans who didn't understand their TBI or PTSD rating, which is probably one of the most complicated ratings you can get and read in your you know, 20 page letter that you get. I saw it as an opportunity to help folks reach in and understand for themselves, have some ownership and empowerment over this information. And these are the concepts I pull into my life today as the independent consultant with Arbonne International and as a clinician with First Alarm Wellness. You know, one of my greatest pleasures is being in contact with First Alarm Wellness and Christina Casola, who is reimagining the way we think about mental wellness with our first responders. Mental health has not been reimagined in decades. And we are the concierge service for our first responder community, and we are we are helping folks see and break down access to these barriers. And I say first responders and bring that up, not just because it's who I work with, but so many veterans enter first responder work. And I have that unique crossroads of veteran work and clinician with first responders that helps bring this perspective to both sides. So what all this to say that serving my community is such a pleasure and such an honor and my real strong goal, what I hope to do in this world and the, the impact I hope to leave is that I help elevate the information that's available on healthy nutrition, brain healthy living, and that mental wellness can be everyone's for the taking. Information is available and just connect with the right person who can help you connect with information. So thank you so much for this honor today and for my family their sacrifice, so much sacrifice. I know just in my own family, what we have gone through post-service VA process and systems. And, and I really, you know, when the anthem was played, I cried and I was like, don't cry. It's a ceremony. And I thought, no, you know, that's really touches me in a place where our community in North County, and thank you assembly member again, for being the only one to do this in the state. It is, it has become a, sort of something people say, thank you for your service, or there's so much sacrifice. But when you peel that layer off and you look deep in what that sacrifice really means, there are tears when the flag is flown, there are tears for the anthem, and there are tears for that sacrifice. And it's such an honor to be able to do that. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Erica. Your inspiration and your positive energy is definitely contagious. Thank you so much. So our next uh, organizational rec recognition award is the Spotlight Award for an organization that works with military families and they are the Blue Star Families. Founded in 2009 by military spouses to empower families to thrive as they serve, the core of their work is to strengthen families, connecting them to support groups and neighbors and other organizations. They believe in strong mutual support and have committed their programs to raising awareness to the unique challenges of families serving alongside their service member. They have over 150,000 members in their network, including chapters all around the world. Assembly member? I wanna, yes, I wanna recognize the entire organization of Blue Star Families who do such important work for our military families. I know this organization and its staff to be extremely driven by their passion for their military families to feel connected and supported and empowered. Specifically, there are three superstars in the Blue Star families that I'd like to recognize today. The first one is Stacy Holt, regional manager of the Chapter West Region, helps lift the morale of junior enlisted family members. Early on when the current pandemic hit, Stacy helped to arrange the distribution of 600 portal devices to single service, uh, single service members to allow for Marines to stay in touch with their family and friends, closing the technology gaps for virtual learning capa capabilities and facilitated a contact-free way to conduct accountability from a distance. Then we have Maggie Meza, Chapter Director of San Diego. It leads a team of volunteers that welcomes and engages over 11,000 military families in the county, especially those who live on Camp Pendleton and surrounding areas. She helps keep awareness of various military family life changes, help mobilize the support that helps military families feel connected in AD 76. 
And Laura Torres, who's a career manager, helps families with the resources that foster spouse career development, find meaningful employment opportunities through direct placement, and connect spouses to their career employment opportunities to enhance their skill sets. Her work creates hundreds of thousands of dollars in economic impact in my district alone. I welcome Stacy, Maggie, and Laura to say a few words to accept the recognition on behalf of Blue Star Families. Thank you. Hi, good morning. Thank you so much, I'm Sam and Tasha, and for your staff and the warm welcome that we got this morning. I also have to thank my colleague, Alon, for the really surprising and generous nomination. It's really nice to be recognized by your colleagues and to sit on this panel today with both Maggie and Laura. You know, Blue Star Families is such a wonderful organization. It's really led by dynamic and generous people and leadership and staff. You know, I've been with this organization almost two years and every day they're dedicated to improving the lives of our local military in the area. You know, I actually have to give a special shout out to my husband who's retiring or almost retiring after almost 30 years of service. He introduced me to this community and it really is a wonderful way to live your life. There's no way I would have been able to survive the multiple combat deployments, having children around the world moves, and even a pandemic without the military community. And it's really a great place to be a part of. You know, this community loves hard and I'm really happy to be with them and also work with them as well. So I really wish everyone a healthy and happy holiday season. Um, and again, thank you so much for this opportunity today. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Assemblymember Tasha Berner ha ha Horvath, sorry about that, for, uh, and your staff for recognizing um, Blue Star families and our mission to connect our military veterans and their families to their community. As a military spouse, I understand the impact that organizations like us and those on here today have on our military community and our civilian community. Um, thank you to my colleagues, Stacy Holt and Laura Tor Torres, and also Elon Enriquez, who did nominate us and, um, for their continued support for me here in my chapter. Thank you to my family for always being there and, and ready to volunteer when I need you. And I look forward to continuing to serve our military community. I'm humbled and honored, and I thank you so much. Thank you so much. This is Laura Torres with Careers. And I, alongside with my colleagues, Stacy, uh, Maggie, and of course, Elan and Bluster families, I really, really appreciate this uh, recognition and, and just, you know, emphasizing a little bit more spotlight on the great work that we've been doing for military spouse employment, for all of the families in general. Of course, not everybody is no secret. My passion is in empowering military spouses with career opportunities, resources, and employment. And this pandemic, you know, has really hindered our community um, because it really shifted uh, workforce uh, initiatives in another direction. And so I just very, very grateful that I continue to do this work for our local community and continue to connect those families that really need that. I believe military spouse employment, it's really another uh, segment of transitioning veterans into their community. And, and it's it goes side by side in to, to fix and to complement a lot of issues uh, that can be resolved for, for veterans in transition. So I encourage everyone out there who has the power to connect military spouses to employment opportunities, to really connect with us to our program, or just simply um, make those opportunities available as well. Thank you so much for all this, um, you know, all the for everything that you do at your office, uh, Representative um, Assemblywoman Tasha, and for the team. Thank you so much for all of the support. Thank you. Thank you once again to St Stacey, Maggie, and Laura from Blue Star Families and the entire team. As appropriate, the, next, the following award is the Military Spouse of the Year. This award is presented to a military spouse whose volunteer efforts continuously shows commitment and dedication beyond the call of duty to family and community alike. Yes, and you know, I think it is appropriate, as Janet said. I have to acknowledge the military spouses typically don't get the accolades they deserve. So when I created awards category for this uh, ceremony, I wanted to make sure we included one for military spouses, because not only do those spouses hold down the fort, but they serve right alongside their service member spouse, making sure all is well upon their return. So the Military Spouse of the Year Award this year for 2020 goes to Emily Woods. Emily has been a military spouse for over 10 years and very well versed in the challenges of military life. She's married to Major James Wood, currently deployed with the 15th Marine Expeditionary Unit, and is a proud mom to three girls who she's currently homeschooling, Sophia, who's eight, 
uh, champion of Quinn, who's six with Down syndrome, and welcomes Ada, who's seven months old, amidst the beginning of the pandemic. She is no stranger to advocacy, both for the military community and special needs community. Emily was honored with the Molly Pitcher Award for her significant and meaningful contribution to the improvement of the field artillery, al al alter <laughs> artillery community, sorry, and experiences command exceptional, exceptional family member program liaison. She's an upbeat source of support, education, and dedication for other Marine families, and has served as a family readiness assistant in different commands, organized gatherings, speakers, events, meal trains, and most recently created an educational series for the unit's family social media page. She's also an active participant in the unit's deployment mentorship program and has been a military spouse kickball association all-star. Emily is always grateful for any opportunity to serve military families and credits her ability to do so with her endless supportive family. It is my pleasure to present the Military Spouse of the Year Award to Emily Woods. Emily? First, I'd like to thank Assembly Member Tasha Werner Horvath and her staff for making it a priority to support and celebrate military veterans and contributors in North County. Um, it is a true privilege to serve the military community. Thank you for this honor. I'm not sure I deserve it. <laughs> um, this opportunity wouldn't be possible without the service of my endlessly supportive husband, Major James Woods, who's currently deployed, my incredible family, my friends, and my three resilient daughters who keep me accountable daily. Um, I thank God for the chance to be part of such a humbling and important cause. Military families are comprised of normal people who happen to love a service member. And most of the time we didn't choose the military. We just choose to join the ride with a person we want to build our lives with. We're thrusted into a life that is sometimes confusing, isolating, and very stressful. Um, I feel that creating a bridge to connect families and commands allows all parties involved to thrive and work together as a well-oiled machine. Um, I think investing in the strength of that bridge really does make a difference in the lives of everyone, including myself. The Marines are better supported at home to focus on their mission and families have the resources and connections to thrive through whatever is thrown their way. Being a part of this effort has provided me with a rich sense of community and purpose. Um, sometimes the service looks like approaching a new spouse with a smile, dropping off a meal, helping with childcare, or just commiserating on a tough day. Other times it looks like putting together events, collecting resources and creating educational opportunities for families. Um, I was taught at a very young age to leave wherever you go better than how you found it. And I'm just working my hardest to make sure that's the case for me and my family. Thank you. Thank you so much, Emily. You truly are deserving and you're, you humble us with your efforts. The next award is a category of the arts. This award is presented to an individual who has shown excellence in the arts and uses art as an expressive platform for greater good to the community. The Excellence in Arts Award goes to W.B. May. W.B. May is a Gulf War Navy veteran living in Oceanside. Together with his wife, Cynthia May, also a Navy corpsman, they are owners of Cynthia's Artistic Expressions Art Gallery in Oceanside. When W.B. was diagnosed with PTSD, Cynthia told him about the benefits of art therapy for PTSD and encouraged W.B. to paint as part of his therapy. Seeing how art helped them, they also wanted to help others as well and started the art gallery and paint and sip events. Together, they hope to share the joy of painting and creating, but also therapeutic benefits of art for symptoms of stress, anxiety, and PTSD to help others. Last month, I had the honor of participating in the unveiling of the beautiful art mural that WB has painted as a gift to the residents and visitors of the city of Oceanside. So if you haven't gone out and see it, it's worth the trip. I present the Excellence of in Arts Award to this year's honoree, W.B. Mays. W.B. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, um, Sarvarth and 76th Assembly District. It's a privilege and it's an honor to uh, be recognized for the things that we do. It's not the purpose in which we, we do them, but it's good to be recognized. We take what we do very seriously. We understand 
the need for another way of mental health healing. And my wife noticed that when I returned from the war, things were a little different for us. And especially for me, I was uh, diagnosed with uh, CPTSD. It has an extra letter in it. And uh, eventually I got into art, a little sketching here, a little sketching there, a little painting here, a little painting there. And it started to work for me. But as we developed and opened up our own shop, we wanted to bring other vets in to offer this to them as well. We recognize that art plays an invaluable role in building the confidence of individuals, uh, helping with anxiety, depression, and stresses. I was uh, featured at the, the Memorial uh, Museum in San Diego at a symposium for suicide prevention among service members and veterans. And uh, we did a mirror for them. And I got to meet a lot of men that expressed the same idea that art heals and art uh, saves lives. So we want to definitely uh, make that available as often as we can, as much as we can, and with wholeheartedly as we can, not just for, for veterans, but also for first responders. We were able to do a coffee with a cop and we, they painted a rock and we still see some of the office officers and they, they remember, oh, we painted the rock and, and they had such a great time. It was so relaxing and this type of thing. So uh, art is a wonderful way to just unwind, a wonderful way to focus. And it's an excellent way to just de-stress. And we offer that here at our Cynthia's Artistic Expressions. And we're always willing to do our part. Uh, the young lady just before says, leave it better than you found it. Well, that's what we want to do as well, to leave it better than we found it. So I thank you guys so very much for the recognition and the opportunity to continue to serve the community of Oceanside. Thank you so much, WB, for all that you give to the community. The next award is a recognition award that goes to an organization for excellence in service. And no one can doubt the efforts of the California's National Guard made up of our citizen soldiers. The Excellence in Service Award goes to the service members of the California National Guard. The California National Guard is receiving the special recognition for their support of their efforts this year. As you may know, the California Guard consists of Army Guard, Air Guard, State Guard, and Youth Challenge programs. Here are a few highlights from their contributions just this year. Over 700 California National Guard members were activated in support of CAL FIRE and the wildfires this year. Over 8,000 California National Guard members were activated in support for law enforcement agencies for civil unrest. Over 500 California National Guard members supported COVID operations from building temporary medical facilities, continuing food bank operations, assisted in testing and supported our nursing homes. Receiving this award on behalf of the California Guard is Captain Morris, oh, I'm gonna miss, uh, Juris, who commanded the, who commands the region, uh, who command region is located in my assembly district. Now, I never miss an opportunity to spotlight people in my district, so let me just tell you a little bit about the soldier before he accepts the award on behalf of the Guard. Captain Juris is a resident of North County, enlisted in the United States Marine Corps, and was stationed in Okinawa, Japan. In 2003, he participated in the invasion of Iraq, and later when he left active duty, he used his Montgomery GI Bill to complete his Bachelor's of Arts degree at Cal State San Marcos. He then turned around and joined the Army National Guard commissioning through Officer Candidate School and went on to compete, complete his master's degree in organizational leadership from Brandman University. He himself has, has deployed in recent years to wildfires across the state, assisting with debris removal, cutting fire lines, and putting out spot, uh, spot fires. Ladies and gentlemen, the Excellence in Service Award this year goes to the California National Guard, Captain Juris, Juris please accept this award on behalf of the Guard. Good morning. On behalf of the Army National Guard, thank you to Assembly Member Warner Horvath and the staff and the residents of the 76th District. Thank you for your support. It's been a, a tough year for, for California and for our Guard members, you know, leaving our civilian employers at a moment's notice, our families, and going off and, and doing the things to help support our communities. Uh, Thank you so much. Your support drives us and keeps us going. Um, and I could tell you that most of the soldiers that I speak to, including myself, 
we wouldn't change anything. We would continue to support our state and support our community. And once again, thank you so much for this award. Thank you, Captain Gurgis and the entire uh, California National Guard. Our next award is in the category of leadership. This award is presented to an individual who has a skill set and influence to engage stakeholders, build consensus, and implement recommendations to build and improve communities. Yes, and this year's Excellence in Leadership Award goes to Colonel Gary Johnson, retired. Gary Johnson has held many important leadership roles in his professional careers. He's currently serving as the Chief Resilience Officer for the County of San Diego Office of Emergency Services. In 1988, Gary graduated from the Naval Reserve Officer Training Corps, commissioned as a second lieutenant in the U.S. Marine Corps. He served as the Fleet Marine Force, uh, served in the Fleet Marine Force, participating in multiple combat deployments in Iraq and Afghanistan, as well as other contingency operations worldwide. He retired at the rank of Marine Colonel and as the Deputy Commander for the Marine Corps Installations West, Camp Pendleton, where he provided direct oversight in all emergency management activities. Gary's experience, background, and definitive leadership help efforts is helping San Diego County ensure the pandemic and coordinate reopening strategies with accountability to medically recognized safe practices. Our region has greatly benefited from Gary's leadership during these challenging times. Gary's devotion to duty and to direct impacts to veterans in the military community is a true asset to North County. So it's my honor to recognize Colonel Gary Johnson with this year's Excellence in Leadership Award. Gary. Well, thank you and good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, like many of the honorees, uh, I really wanted to thank not only the California State Assembly, but District 76, uh, and in particular, uh, Assembly Member Tasha Burner Horvath uh, for creating this award to really recognize some really fantastic, tremendous military veterans. I also want to take the opportunity to thank the other, or basically uh, congratulate the other honorees out there and in the three service organizations. Of those three service organizations, I've worked pretty closely with those uh, in the past and actually currently work with them uh, currently. Uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, continued service after retirement, um, I think it's part of my DNA. Uh, and I would say I get that DNA from my family. My father is a, uh, is a veteran Marine, uh, and he and my mother uh, teamed up for 35 years serving the United States Marine Corps. And what I really uh, uh, stood out to me as they were retiring and transitioning is how much they continued to serve and continue to serve now the community and the public at large. Uh, also, uh, I have an older brother and uh, often uh, not only roughed me up and toughened me up, but my brother has showed me what right looks like when it comes to being a selfless uh, servant uh, and he is the epitome of the man that will take his shirt off uh, his back for anybody in need. Uh, when it comes to my, my personal family, my immediate family, my beautiful daughter, Morgan, uh, raced out of college and came right back to Camp Pendleton and start, started serving Marine families with our Marine Corps Con uh, Community Services Program at Camp Pendleton. Uh, she stumbled across a young Marine and married to Andrew, and now they are happily married and continuing a life of service. And then there's my youngest son, Ian. Uh, my son, Ian, uh, did like I did, and he took the baton from me. And now he is actively serving as a corporal in the United States Marine Corps and a recon Marine in Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. Uh, when, it, you know, when it comes to this particular uh, award, folks, I guess uh, the only thing I would say when it comes to leadership is, is I'll leave you with uh, my, my three keys to success as a leader. And that first key is basically centering yourself around really, really good people. And I forget the other two. Uh, I say that tongue in cheek because folks, uh, like many of you have indicated, this ward isn't about Gary. This ward is really about a lot of the, uh, the uh, folks that I've been serving with here in the last two years at the County of San Diego. In particular, the young men and women that I serve with uh, on a daily basis uh, within the operation uh, uh, emergency services here for the county. And then on top of that, with uh, the senior leadership that I've been working very closely with over the last nine months, as we, uh, as we conduct and direct uh, COVID-19 response. So with that, again, I thank you. Uh, I especially thank that uh, individual out there that potentially uh, put, a, you know, that individual, unnamed individual that uh, submitted our, our names to be recognized. Thank you for that. 
And then again, thank you just for the honor of being selected. And then on behalf of all those that I've served with here at, uh, at uh, the San Diego County, uh, we appreciate you all very much. That's all I have. Back over to you, Janet. Thank you so much, Colonel Johnston. And thank you so much for being a continued uh, uh, leader, not only in our community, but beyond. Our final award is the Veteran Volunteer of the Year Award. This award is presented to an individual who has dedicated their life to service, to a passion for a cause, or advocated on a campaign for goodwill during the COVID-19 pandemic. The Veteran Volunteer of the Year for 2020 goes to Lieutenant Commander Tracy Owens, retired. Tracy retired as a Lieutenant Commander after 30 years of dedicated service in the U.S. Navy. During her three decades of service, she gained experience from the Village the bridge and serving on board four naval ships to include three nuclear powered aircraft carriers. She has served a vast array of communities, including submarine, aviation, surface, explosive ordnance disposal, and CB communities. After her Navy service, she continued to serve her community through work with several nonprofits addressing the needs of military families. As the community engagement coordinator and military liaison, at Support the Enlisted Project STEP. Tracy brings together resources for local military families, um, local for local military community issues like food insecurity, working with the community on finding solutions. And her concern for the struggling military families during the COVID-19 pandemic moved her to spearhead several efforts to provide much needed resources. Tracy began STEP's contact-free drive-through distributions that provided food, hygiene products, baby diapers, children's activity, and other essential items to families in need. She also leads distributions called Warehouse on Wheels, WOW, in Oceanside, on Camp Pendleton, and across Southern California. She, along with volunteers, coordinates, packs up a box, uh, packs up a box trucks, and drives military installations, allowing families to shop for free essential goods. Since March, these, di these distributions have served more than 9,300 individuals, providing more than 110,000 pounds of food and 100,000 baby divers to those in need. It's clear that her commitment to service has touched the lives of countless service members, veterans, and their families. For this reason, it's an honor to present Tracy Owens with this year's Veteran Volunteer of the Year Award. Tracy? Good morning. Thank you, Assemblymember Berner Horvath. Uh, thank you so much. I am very honored and quite humbled to receive such a prestigious award. Um, <clears throat> I'm very honored to have had the opportunity to serve my country and for the women, men and women that served with me during my 30 years of service. I'm thankful to my family, friends, mentors, and coworkers and for their support along the way. Uh, I'm especially thankful for my son, James, who was always my biggest supporter. And, um, he recently enlisted in the Navy. Um, when I retired, I knew that I wanted to continue my service, uh, but I, and I wanted to make a difference in the community, but I really didn't know what that looked like. When I heard about the job at STEP, um, I knew that it would be a natural fit. Um, I knew what it was like to be a junior enlisted sailor and have financial struggles, but I also knew from a leadership standpoint um, how overwhelming a financial crisis can be for our young service members. I started working at STEP for uh, two years ago, and I've found <clears throat> I've had the opportunity to work with thousands of families. We work very closely, <clears throat> excuse me, with our families in North County ensuring that they have the resources that they need. Uh, we continue to build relationships with uh, our commands at Camp Pendleton and strengthen our community partnerships. In the last eight months, uh, through generous community support, we have had the opportunity to have um, food and diaper distributions in North County <clears throat> and served hundreds of family in North County alone. Uh, we are so grateful for a community that has embraced the programs at STEP. Um, and my next big job will be to help our team take our impactful and results-driven program to the active duty and veteran community in Washington State. Volunteering has always been a way of life for me, um, both in and out of uniform. 
I currently serve as the coordinating council member for the San Diego Military Family Collaborative and on the Family Life Action Group for the San Diego Veterans Coalition. I've volunteered for many events um, in the community over the years. And for the last 11 years, I have served on the connection team for two local churches. Our team helps to build relationships with new members and plan and coordinate events in the local community. I genuinely believe that we have an obligation to give back to the community. And that takes an effort and an uh, action on our part. Uh, if you have the opportunity to touch a life, even if it's just one life, then you've made a difference. Thank you. Yes, and, and thank you, Tracy, and thank you to all of our honorees for your commitment and dedication to our communities. I'm truly humbled and grateful for all the great work you all do, and thank you for allowing me to recognize you uh, and your efforts publicly. I know everyone in the audience today is extremely proud and delighted to have, to have you participated in this virtual ceremony, and I'm truly grateful for all that you do. Thank you to our guests, our families and friends, our members of the public for joining today's virtual ceremony honoring North County's military community heroes. I do really hope next year we could do this, uh, do this in person and to celebrate all the wonderful things. Um, you know, we've heard from people of how they're helping during the pandemic, how they're helping um, the entire community. And, and, that's, and you've heard the mantra of service. And I think all of us have that service to our countries and to our communities. And I'll remind each of us to always reach out to thank a veteran, celebrate our military spouses and our families, support our military service members near and far. I also want to mention that the National Veterans Chamber of Commerce, as I mentioned, Joe Molina has provided a number of certificates. You can see them a little bit here, a number of certificates for each of our awardees today. Thank you, Joe, that's very kind of you. Um, to make sure that you see that it's not only the assembly district, but we all support and they're grateful for the work that you do. A special thank you goes to Oceanside High School Choir. I can't remember who said it, but I also uh, had tears in my eyes every time I hear the national anthem because I think it strikes us quite down deep in, in who we are as Americans. Thank you, uh, Oceanside High School Choir for beautiful voices and the Vista Girl Scout Troop 1930 for leading our pledge virtually. In normal times, this event would have been held in person over a special luncheon that families and friends would be invited to. So despite the challenges of our virtual environment, I want to thank our sta my staff, for putting this together in this meaningful virtual event. My district director, Janet Chen, my communications assistant, Glenn McDonald, my field representatives, Fernando, uh, Fernando Hernandez, Alex Kiwan, and Salima Balderas. I encourage you to stay connected with my staff and I. You know, we know the, the next couple of months are gonna get worse, unfortunately, and not better. So I encourage you to stay in touch with my staff and I on any issues that you care about. Feel free to reach out. We are here to serve you. Thank you again for joining today and stay safe, North County. This concludes today's ceremony. Thank you. Nicole.